circumstances. So long as DOMA is on the books, yeah. it won't apply to same-sex couples, okay. right? All right. Now, what if I don't transfer the property, but we get it during marriage, or and uh, or the, or the period where domestic registered domestic partners, and we contribute unequally to the purchase price? Now what? Well, now we've got the problem with the uh, CCA that says uh, my 100000 earned income is mine, my partner's 50000 earned income is hers. I think it's community income. If we're buying the house with our combined community earnings and own it 50-50, then I think there's no, there's no gift. But the IRS would say, consistent with the CCA, that we are using part of my earnings to subsidize her 50% ownership. It might in part be a gift mm -hmm. uh, under their view. Uh, the problem is we really don't know and we yeah. need to find out from the IRS what these rules are. People, right. I don't think people are filing gift tax returns uh, for the creation of community property right now. The issue most often comes up uh, when a couple splits up or divorces and then they're ordered by the court or at least supervised by the court to split their combined community property, or one will have to pay some money to the other partner to get a release of the community property. Uh, and the question is whether or not that's an income tax event, or is that a gift? Yeah, because there are, in the past, we did have some, in fact, even in the guidance, uh, as I recall under 1041, uh, when you have these property divisions, basically what the court is saying, or excuse me, uh, even the IRS, I think, has said it in rulings, that this is a gift uh, if you're if it's unequal it's a gift and you got an unlimited marital deduction so no tax right. no tax yeah. and and for income tax purposes whoever ends yeah. up with the property takes the historical cost basis so right. it's just it, it has no tax consequences at all for a divorce doesn't for for uh for a as you say conventional married yes. couple a, an opposite sex married couple yes yes okay well, how about um, pre-nuptial pre agreements, excuse me, or I guess you could say premarital, but anyway. Or pre-dups. <laughs> pre-dups, whatever you want <laughs> to call it. If it's a domestic so, partnership. So can those be used to reduce some of the uncertainty? Sure. I mean, it, it, we can agree between ourselves or, to, or two spouses or, or registered domestic partners can agree between themselves um, to opt out of community property. If you opt out of community property, you know what the rules will be. But of course, you don't get any of the benefits of community property. Uh, and, and one benefit I probably ought to mention, uh, it, it's under state law. I mean, because okay. remember, these relationships are recognized under state law. Uh, when one partner dies, let's say you bought the home years ago for 100000 and now it's worth $2 million. Mm -hmm. California appreciating market is right. in effect again. Right. Uh, when the first partner dies, What's the tax basis in the surviving partner who takes the home? This is a capital gains issue. Uh, if I had to take carryover basis, uh, there, there's 1.9 million gain in that property. Uh, technically, at the federal level, you get a step up in basis as to 50% of the ownership. But because of a quirky little rule that's in the federal code and that's recognized under the California tax law, right. For state income tax purposes, if you own property as community property, the surviving partner or spouse gets a fresh start or 100% step up in basis, two million basis mm -hmm. uh, at the death of the first partner, which means if the survivor turns around and sells it tomorrow for two million, zero taxable gain. Right. So you get the step up on the whole thing. Now, for state purposes, for state not purposes. for federal purposes. Now, for federal purposes, they're just saying, well, we don't recognize that, is that the deal? Because it's, the, because the it's statute mentions spouse. Uh -huh. It's section 1014 okay. of the Internal and, Revenue and Code. It uses the word spouse, and right now, because of DOMA, spouse does not mean same-sex spouse. Okay, so we need to make that clear. So you can only get the half step up. Right, at the federal level. And uh, maybe for just a moment, and we can't get any detail related to this because we're running out of time again, uh, though the right now where we are is the estate tax uh, has been uh, repealed for a year, and this automatic basis adjustment uh, doesn't necessarily happen. Right. As of January 1, 2010, the estate tax was repealed. The gift tax has not been repealed. A lot of people don't realize that, but the estate tax has been repealed, and with it has the step-up in basis provision. 
Uh, I'm not sure yet what that means about California state law, um, since it's dependent on uh, Section 1014 of the Internal Revenue Code. But my own Good feeling question. is that uh, everyone expects Congress to reenact yeah. the estate tax, probably with a 3.5 million exemption, which is what it is at now, and, and make it retroactive to January 1. But I've been on listservs lately with estate planning attorneys who are pulling their hair because, and, and, and have clients who have died since mm -hmm. January 1, and they need to know what the basis is in the property, and no one's quite sure. It's supposed yeah. to be carryover basis except for the first 1.3 million. Right. So anyway, uh, we have a huge problem <laughs> here. We're going to talk about it um, in more depth probably in another show, unless Congress takes quick action this <laughs> year. Uh, I don't think anybody expects Congress to take quick action uh, anytime uh, because uh, uh, they can't seem to get a whole lot done. Right. Um, all right. So, and the 3.5 million exemption that you mentioned that really applied for 2009 doesn't apply for 2010. 2011. It goes back down to a million. Yeah. If, if Congress our, does nothing. Our tax law becomes a pumpkin yep. at the end of the Cinderella story yep. of the Bush administration. Right. And so uh, then uh, we're going to see uh, basically things going back to the way that they were uh, before 2001. And uh, so we're going to have uh, a very low uh, exemption right. and much higher tax rates. Right. Okay. If that happens. So um, I've got about 30 seconds that I can give you ah, okay. to throw, throw something out. So well, let's assume we are going to have an estate tax, and it's got an exemption and a marital deduction in it. Okay. Uh, right now, same-sex couples can't take advantage of this planning device where you set aside uh, an exemption amount and give the rest to your spouse and claim the marital deduction and have zero estate taxes on the first spouse to die. But I want to challenge people to think about the fact that in the near future, either DOMA will be repealed or it will be struck down by a court, and at that point, same-sex married couples will be recognized by the federal tax code. I think people who are drafting estate plans, planning for the marital deduction, need to take this into account as they draft their estate plans, even though the relationship's not recognized right now. So, it might be in the short term. So put contingency language into Cont your estate plan. Certainly. Yeah, okay. All right, folks, we're all out of time. As you can see, this is a huge area, but uh, I so much appreciate, Pat, you being with me today. Thanks for joining me and Thank sharing you. with us uh, some of your thoughts related to this stuff. Extremely complex area. Uh, but, you know, t very timely topic. So, folks, I uh, hope you'll pay attention to this, see your tax advisor, and I hope you'll join us next time on Financial Insider Weekly.